Come on, Fred. Let's go. Come here, buddy. Oh, good morning, buddy. Good morning. Yeah! <laughs> what up, y'all? And welcome back to another one. Today, a little solo duck hunt on public land with old Frederick. Hi, buddy. How are you today? Have not hunted public at all yet this entire duck hunting season. Big ducks just started here in Kansas. I didn't even get to till hunt any public marshes. So today we're going to get after it. Just me and Fred today. No blind. We're going to be sitting in the weeds. It's going to be his first time doing that. He's used to a blind. He's used to a panel blind and an A-frame. So I think he'll like it today. But before we get on the road, check out them new ducks camo hoodies. They are in stock, in fact. The Blades camo hoodie is in stock. This is the Bottomlands. This is the first time we've ever carried Bottomlands. So, if you want to pick one up before they run out again, head on over to the site. I will link them both down in the description below. But I'm not going to waste a lot of time here in the intro. I'm running late. We got about a 30 minute drive today. And we got to carry everything in by ourselves. Gun, decoys, mojo, blind bag, you name it. It's a solo mission today, boys. Oh man, I feel like I've been running ragged already today. Originally, I was going to do a 410 solo public land video today. That was my original go-to plan. But for some odd reason, Bobby's little brain said, Hey bud, you might want to throw some shells in the tube of your pump action little 410 there and make sure you have a plug in. And guess what? I don't know what happened to my plug. I took it out when Jordan and I were pigeon hunting. You don't have to have a plug for pigeons, you know what I mean? I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just glad I checked it and uh, made sure. So always do that, guys. If, if you have a little inkling, something in the back of your head going, dude, you need to check your gun, see if, you're, see if your plug's in there. Hey, the season's just now getting started, y'all. Be sure you're legal. On top of that, it's sitting at 45 degrees right now. It is 5.47 in the a.m. Like I said, we're running just a hair late. Uh, we're not going to have to walk in very far at all. That's the good thing about today. And the wind is out of the east at 5 to 8 mile an hour. So not much wind, but I don't think it'll matter. I brought like a dozen and a half, maybe two dozen floater decoys. All of them are teal decoys, I believe. And one mojo. I'm not going to bring too many decoys, only one man today, you know what I mean? And I checked the report on this particular little marsh, and it says there's only like 1,500 birds here, mostly teal. So, well, we made it with plenty of time to spare. It's right at 611, about an hour till shooting light. There's one other truck here, and I've been scoping the area, trying to find a headlamp out there, and I can't see where they might be. So I'm just going to walk in. I don't think I'm going to walk in too far. I'm going to make it easy today. Since it is a little solo hunt, I don't want to I don't want to have to go walk in 2 miles because at this particular wetlands, you can walk a long ways if you really want to. I have not scouted this place. I I don't know where the ducks want to be. We're basically just going in blind today, boys. This is just your average Put the decoys in the bed of the truck, load up the dog and the gun, and go. No scouting involved. But I'm going to leave the big camera here in the truck. We're going to rock out on the GoPro. Just have so much to carry already. I don't want to end up dropping this big thing, big expensive thing in the water. Well, forgot to mention one thing. Today is Monday. Come on, Fred. Come on, buddy. Today is Monday, so opening weekend just occurred. Uh, it probably would have been better if I would have waited a couple days until Tuesday or Wednesday. Probably would have had a little better hunting. But, just got to send it, boys. You get, when you want to get out there, you just got to get out there and send it. What do you think, Frederick? Well, we're all done sitting up. Just got to throw the old mojo out. 18 decoys is what we brought today. Dozen and a half. So, little spread, one mojo. And they're all teal decoys, too. Minimum decoys. One dog, one gun. If you guys like this video, you, right off the bat, come on guys, smash the thumbs up button for me and Frederick. Old Frederick deserves that thumbs up. Let's get this video to 3,000 likes just for old Frederick. We appreciate it, y'all. What you think, Frederick? What you think, buddy? Huh? Huh? Well, me and Frederick, we're all sat up. Now we're just waiting on shooting light. Look at him, he's a baby. He is a baby. 
Uh, water is a lot deeper than I originally thought. The mojo pole is almost too short to keep the mojo, the spinning wing decoy, out of the water. Well, we're about three minutes out from shooting light here. I was getting worried for a while. I wasn't hearing any ducks, I wasn't seeing any ducks. But now that the sun's coming up a little bit, we're starting to see little groups up in the air flying about. About two minutes out here, I'm gonna load the gun. Let's get to hunting, boys. But we do have an absolutely beautiful morning here, though. Here we go, first group. First group, boys. Out front. Sit, Fred, sit. Here we go. Frank! There we go. He's seen that bird. That, that bird went quite a ways. I got a mark on it. That's a long retrieve for Fred. Woo, doggy. First bird down, though. And he's dragging a floater decoy with him. That's not good. That was a nice group. Oh, my. Well, we're going to have to go help him. He's dragging a floater. He ain't doing so hot already. That was about a group of 10. Completely whiffed my first shot. you got a decoy attached to you, dude. <laughs> what in the world did you do, dude? Come on. Come to land. Old Frederick. He's only a year old. He's a goofball. It's another group. Well, there's a lot of shooting going on up north. That seems like it's a place to be. They haven't quit shooting up there. Should have done some scouting, Frederick. Here's a teal. Here we go. <laughs> Missed him, Fred. No bird. He was hauling the mail. Good boy. He got him. Good boy. We got us a shoveler, a Drake shoveler. I knew it wasn't a till. That's a good boy, Frederick. You found it all by yourself. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, if that don't deserve a thumbs up, I don't know what does. Woo, I didn't think we were ever gonna find that bird, Fred. There we go. Look at that. That's awesome. Old Spoonie, baby. Can't go wrong with the Spoonies. Man, there's some good groups of ducks out flying, Fred. Come on. Let's go, buddy. That was a good boy. That was a good boy. Total, over here in my parts, there's me and two other groups of hunters. One guy walked in, he got behind me. I said, what's up, man? He was like, Bobby, is that you? I'm like, yeah. Shout out to a uh, whole Cole. What's up, man? Nice to meet you, finally. Good boy, dude. That's a good boy. All right, right here. Here's our sitting spot. Come on, Fred. Here we are. Oh, oh, good boy. Good boy, buddy. I'm tired, man. So there's a lot more shooters than I ever imagined. <laughs> For a Monday, uh, it's crazy. I didn't think there'd be near this many people, but it is the first weekday after big duck opener. So people are wanting to get out here on a weekday Assuming that you know not as many people will be out here as the weekends. That was my theory But uh, not much calling. I haven't heard anybody call a lot of these public situations like this just like this one here I really don't ever call the best thing to have out here is a whistle uh, With all the other gunshots going off a call if you're just highballing them and, and, and quacking and trying to make a ton of racket I honestly don't think it'll help because all the other shooting and decoys and spinning wing mojos an opportunity that the birds know so all in all i just don't think public land calling unless you're the only one out there it might help get their attention and and draw them into your spread but i don't call much when it's public land duck hunting see there's a lot of gunshots go sit fred sit come in here we might try to give him a little feeder action see if he <laughs> yep, it don't matter. The calling just don't matter. And that was a good group, Fred. 
That was a really good group, Fred. Let's see if they turn around on us. Come on. Tell them to come back, Fred. Say, come back, you six pack. What, dude? You want me to shoot the coot? A ton of you have requested a coot shoot, catch and cook. We got one spoonbill down. Might as well shoot a coot or three, huh? <laughs> Nothing else is flying. Well, one of two things here. We're either gonna have to just wait for another day to do, a, do the coot shoot because there's a hunter right over there and I don't wanna shoot his way trying to shoot coots. Uh, but it is 15 is your limit a day on coots. 45 is your possession limit. So uh, yeah, coots, you can shoot them, a lot of them. But a little story time for you while it's, uh, while it's slow. So I got a DM on Instagram yesterday. I went through them all. I replied to everybody. I think I had 200 that I went through. It's been crazy. Y'all have been extra supportive. Thank you so much. But uh, on my last Foul Friday, uh, a guy DM'd me and he said, Bobby, I just want to let you know that uh, you promoting gun safety at the end of your Foul Friday, uh, how you did it, talking about where your barrel tip is pointed, uh, just always keeping gun safety on not only your brain but all of my viewers brain he was like dude way to go that's such a good job basically long story short he thanked me up and down because he lost one of his closest friends to a hunting accident and um, it, it was a pure accident it was something that uh, it was a fluke deal you know no one's seen it coming type of deal his buddy stood up in front of him you know uh, unfortunately the individual didn't make it and uh, my heart goes out uh, for the individual uh, that has to live with that the rest of their life I'm sure I'm sure that's not an easy task I'm sure that is a life-changing event for sure so uh, his story really touched touched me I mean uh, really it was it was it was thick <laughs> it was deep uh, but it just goes to show um, no matter how careful we are out here guys with our guns with where our barrel tips are pointed being on safety the whole nine yards You can never be too careful just the only thing we can do guys is keep it on our minds in the back of our minds in the front of them I mean keep it on hand gun safety gun awareness guys. I, I'm really gonna start talking about it a lot more and uh, It's important. I know you guys know gun safety Obviously a lot of you have been Obviously a lot of you hunt so you've been through hunter safety and all that But the more I promote gun safety just the more it's gonna be on our minds. You know what I'm saying? I just want to help because I need to be talking about it. I need to be remembering it. So That's it. I'm done preaching I've Got teal buddy Oh, That's a nice little group. They're gonna do it Fred. Ooh, maybe not. They're still flying, Fred. Man, they turned on us. It looked like they were going to give it up. I could have shot right there, but... They're still flying around. Man. This is the thing about uh, public hunting, guys. You know, a lot of us can complain about sky busters and high ballers and, and everything, but uh, public situations like this, birds are weary. You almost got to take just what you can get. You know what I mean? So when you're out there in the public marsh and you see Buddy take a, you know, 40, 50 yard shot, let him do what he wants. This is public land, you know? Come on. Well, it is now 8.30. Seeing some guys starting to pick up decoys and head out. There hasn't been a shot in the last 30 minutes, literally. But I think I might get out of here to go do some scouting uh, before I head home. There's a lot more shooting activity going on on the north side of the marsh so i need to go up there and uh see what all's up but if you guys want a coot shoot drop a comment down below i will come back and do one i promise you but here's our itty bitty rinky dink little itty bitty spread today dozen and a half decoys one mojo on the right it's on the right side and it's so low because that's the only place that it was shallow enough to stick out of the water everywhere else it was too deep. There's a lot more water here this year than last year, that's for sure. What do you think, Fred? Here, you did good. You found our one spoonie of the day. That's a good boy. Somebody's shooting. They must be getting into them coots. 
So you guys have been asking a lot of questions like, Bobby, can I use a Dove Mojo in my duck spread? Guys, of course you can. Uh, like you just seen, I got all teal decoys out here. Teal decoys and woodies, real small, you know? And I shot a spoonie. We only had two goes on birds. I only had two groups of birds to actually look at us. So, if I would have had big decoys out here, do you think it actually would have mattered? No, I don't. Today, I can tell you the one thing, location, location, location. Like I said, those guys up north, they have been shooting all morning long. Us three groups of hunters down here on the south end, we shot early this morning, and that was it. When it comes to public hunting, guys, duck hunting, just run what you got. You know what I'm saying? It's not a big deal. Get you a spinner out there, throw some floaters. Doesn't matter how you put them out there, just put them out there. It's not, it, you don't have to overthink it. You know what I'm saying? Just get out there, get it done. If the birds want to be there, they're going to decoy for you. It's all, again guys, scouting pays off. I didn't scout on this hunt. The one of many that I have not ever scouted on. We shot one duck. That's how it goes. Well, there we go. See, this is what I was talking about, how deep it is. Mojo is barely out of the water. Goodness. Woo. If it would have been any deeper, we wouldn't have been able to use this bad boy. But not a bad little hunt. One thing I can say, guys, is uh, just my little walk-in, which was only about 400, 500 yards over by the trees where I parked, I've seen probably 50 empty shells. And uh, I can tell you guys, yo, yo, yo. We, this is our privilege to come out here and enjoy these public lands, guys. We have to pick up our empties, guys. Pick up your empty shells. I said it last year because walking out was just a nightmare of empties laying around. Guys, pick up your empty shells. I even seen an empty monster can and some wrappers. It's like, come on, y'all. Pick up your stuff. I challenge all you guys to always make sure that all your empties, all your trash is always picked up. Do it. That is good hunting ethics.